Hey everyone, it's technology expert Burton Kelso here with another tech tip to help you get the most out of the technology in your life. Today we're talking about how to enable or disable Turbo Boost on your Macintosh products. If you are using an iMac, a Mac Mini, a MacBook Pro, or MacBook Air, you have the option of downloading a non-Apple app called Turbo Boost to allow you to get more speed out of your Macintosh computer. We'll also talk about other ways that you can speed up your Mac. Now, when you are when you have an older Mac, chances are it's going to slow down. Now, one of the good features about Turbo Boost is that if you are using an older Mac with an Intel processor, you can use Turbo Boost to give new life to your Mac. Now it's not like it's going to power it like a new Mac, but it will add a boost of power to your Mac that will allow you to get some speed and the program is smart enough if you're using a MacBook Pro or MacBook Air to help save battery life because we all know a lot of things that speed up your Mac can drain your battery life. Let's take a look at a Macintosh desktop. Now, if you want to find out if you can use Turbo Boost on your Mac, we are not going to go there yet, but let's go to the Mac menu. So click on the Apple menu in the upper left-hand corner and go to About This Mac. Once you go to that menu, and I'll show that in a second after we get through looking at my handsome face, it will let you know what type of processor you have and what operating system that you are running. One of the challenges with Mac OS is, is that they only support o OSs that are five years or newer. Really puts you in a tight spot when you're running a Mac that is working perfectly well, but for some odd reason won't download those latest updates. So let's talk about how that can last a little bit longer. Now going back to Turbo Boost, what you want to look at is if you have an Intel processor. Now it'll let you know if you go to the Mac menu and about this Mac is it'll tell you the operating system, which is currently this Mac mini is running Mac OS Monterey, the year of this Mac. And as you can see, this is an almost 10 year old Mac mini. Late 2024 means that late next year, I may have to buy a new Mac, but I'm always already at that process with the Mac mini because as you can see, it only will upgrade to Monterey. Ventura and the newer operating systems, it will not load. An important thing to also look at is the processor, which is Intel. Now, if you are running an older Mac with an Intel processor, then Turbo Boost is going to work just fine. Now, if you have a newer Mac with the M1 or M2 processors, then you don't need Turbo Boost and it will not work with it because Turbo Boost is a program that is only designed for Intel processors that are built into Macs. Now closing out our About This Mac, in which will take a few seconds, we are going to go to Chrome and I'm going to take you to the website where you can get Turbo Boost. As you can see, Turbo Boost has been around for a while, but it's at the website of tbswitcher.com forward slash Ruger Syap or whatever the heck that is. But anyway, Copy that URL, which is featured right here, and it will take you to the place where you can download Turbo Boost Switcher Pro or Standard. Now, with me, if it's free, I love it, but there are some features in the Pro that you might want to consider. Now, let's take a look at some of them. So, if you get the Turbo Boost Switcher free, you can just enable disable Turbo Boost feature on demand. It monitors both your CPU speed and your temperature you can configure to open at login and finally you can enable disable at launch now the turbo bit the turbo switcher pro offers a whole host of features but if you're budget conscious and you just want a tool that will help speed up your mac my folks you can just download the turbo boost switcher free let me minimize chrome and let's take a look at turbo booster once you get it installed. Now, when you attempt to install Turbo Booster, it will ask for your Mac sign-in and password, which is always the case with Macintosh products when you download new apps. 
But once you get that app installed, it will install itself under applications, under Go, uh, Finder, and then applications. But also it'll put a lightning bolt switch in the upper right hand corner, which will give you several options with Turbo Boost. Now, one of the first options is that you can disable Turbo Boost or you can turn it on. If you go to charts, it will bring up what I was talking about before. Well, it didn't this time. Oh, there it is. It will ask you, since you are modifying the program, to enter in the password that you would use to log into your Mac product. Again, this is not a new password. It is the password that you use to log into your Mac. So don't get, a, get confused about what password you have to enter in. Finally, if you have no password on your Macintosh product, just leave that space blank. We'll get back to it and just hit OK and it will allow you to log in. Once you're in, you can check the temperature of the CPU of your Macintosh and the fan speed. As you can see, the speeds that we have right now are what you want. CP load of 11 or actually 10%, a temperature of 84% Fahrenheit, and a fan speed of 1806 RPM and the gigahertz on the processor is running great as well. Closing out and going back into Turbo Boost, you can also see other features that it will let you know what the CPU load is, which at 8%, that means that there's not much running on the processor of the computer, which is a good thing. But Turbo Boost, if it is ha has a load, then it will allow you to utilize more of that CPU. Refresh rate, you got me what the heck that means, but I think it's refresh rate for the screen. But you can also uh, open at login with Turbo Boost free, but you can also with the paid version, oh, you can do it with the free version. You can also disable it at launch as well if you think that the program is causing too much of a problem with your computer. Also, you've got the on off text status uh, bar and you can also have it display in a, several different languages as well. If you wanna enable Turbo Boost, you can have a key to enable it or disable it so that you can turn it on at will and not have to go to the menu at the top. And then let's close out of this window and go back to Turbo Boost. And finally, you can check for updates. You can quit out the program. You can look it about and help. Now updates, uh, since it is a Apple program and you have the option to check at startup, well, let me go back. You can check it at startup, but Turbo Boost is not an Apple program. It's from a legitimate source. So if you have issues, you would have to go back to the company that manufactures it as opposed to Apple. Is Turbo Boost an end all for all Macintosh products as far as speed? Not necessarily. It does, does add a little boost but there are several other things that you can do to increase the speed of your computer. One of the first things that you want to do, and since this is only a demo Mac, it really doesn't matter, but I'm gonna go back, and let me show you what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go back to about this Mac, and then we're gonna go to the overview of the computer. Again, this computer is running only four gigabytes of RAM. Now, if I were a power user and my Mac is slow, Four gigs is not going to be enough for this Mac Mini. So one of the things that we want to do would be to upgrade the RAM. And I'll show you where to go in a second. The other thing would be the storage for this device. Now I've got plenty of room on this. And I don't know why I clicked on support, but I've got plenty of room on my Mac Mini. But one of the things that we have to take a look at is, and I need to go back because I just showed it, is the type of hard drive that you have. You want to consider, if you've got an older, slower Macintosh, to get a solid state hard drive. What's the difference with the solid state hard drive? Well, solid state hard drive has no moving parts, much like your iPhone and your iPad. It has a piece of storage in it that has no moving parts. Your older iMac or Macintosh product probably has a hard drive that has moving parts in it. And after a while, as we know, with moving parts, Computers with moving parts slow down. So if Turbo Boost doesn't help, consider getting more RAM in your computer and a solid state hard drive.
Now, where can you get more RAM? Now, this is not an ad for this company, but Crucial is probably one of the best places to get memory and hard drive for older Macintosh computers. As you know, Apple, as I try to type in Crucial, does not support older stuff, and it even is called legacy products. And Apple will only support products that currently support the, uh, the supported operating system. So for example, if you have a Mac that's older and you can run Monterey or Ventura, which are currently the two supported operating systems, Apple's gonna help you out. But if you're running a Mac that's running El Capitan or something older or a little bit newer, then Apple isn't going to help you out. But now as far as your upgrades are concerned, let's take a look at crucial.com, which is an excellent website that you can go to and order both, after we accept all cookies, both hard drives and RAM for your computer. As you can see, you can get external hard drives from Crucial. You can also get NVMEs, but for your older Macintosh computers, it's gonna be either Crucial DRAM or SATA hard drives. And Crucial makes it easy to work with. If you shop Crucial, you can either click on the computer scanner, which will automatically find your uh, computer or you can do the three-step upgrader which is you type in your manufacturer and your computer which would be Apple and then once you get to Apple you can just click on Apple and then from Apple there what kind of Apple product do you have you have an iMac have a Mac mini Mac Pro etc so if you have one you put in your type of computer and then of course go to the year and it will tell you exactly not only what type of hard drive you need, but also you need to put in um, the hard drive as well. Or it won't put it in. It will tell you what type of hard drive and RAM you got. So once that comes up, and we'll give it a second, you can tell it we don't want your feedback. It'll list the compatible RAM for your computer. There you go. And there's a switch for internal solid state hard drives. You can click there and order directly for Crucial. But in worst case scenarios, it is better. I mean, you can start off again with Turbo Boost, but in most instances, if you're running an older Mac, a solid state hard drive or more RAM will make it run like a new computer. And keep that in mind. Um, so with that said, if you've got comments or questions about enabling or disabling Turbo Boost, Leave them in the comment section below. We'd love to hear, to hear from you to find out how we can help speed up that old Macintosh computer because they are like tanks and they do last quite a bit, a long time. Honestly, there was a customer that had a 200, I want to say 2008 MacBook that was still running. Only problem with it was the battery. Replace the battery, Mac is still running. With every video, Please like, comment, or share with your friends because there's somebody out there that's struggling with computer issues and you don't want people to, quote unquote, suffer in silence. So with every video I make, my goal is to help you get the most from the technology that you use at home and at work. I love technology. I've read all the manuals and I'm serious about making technology fun, safe, and easy to use for everyone. So take care of yourself and do many things to make you smile. And thanks for watching.